Our next guests are going to entice you to join them in a fabulous charity brunch happening at Restaurant 18, where you can come and see their brand new renovations of their dining room. We are joined by executive chef from Side Door and Restaurant 18, Jonathan Korecki. Jonathan, welcome to the show. Great Thank to have you, you here. We also Thank have Kurt Morrison, who's chef de cuisine at Restaurant 18. Kurt, great to have you here as well. Uh, great idea for a charity brunch. I know that we, we you and I just finished doing a, another fundraiser for the Ottawa Food Bank. That's right. That and we're following up with this great one. Tell us uh, what you have planned, Jonathan. Well, this is actually Kirk's little brain. Oh, this child. is Kirk's? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Sorry. You always go to the executive chef first. Hey, you know uh, what I mean? I'll, I'll just stand over here. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, tell us about the, uh, the ideas and what you've got planned, uh, Kirk. Well, I was uh, really inspired by our uh, winning the four diamonds again uh, this year. Uh, clap, clap for that. Yeah, congratulations. Um, and kind of use that as a springboard to help out the Ottawa Food Bank and uh, launch a really cool event. So Very nice. Mm. So what have you got okay. planned for the brunch? Uh, it, it's going to be a kind of Vegas-style opulent champagne caviar duck roast beef. Yeah, the whole, the the whole, whole shebang. Nice. Yeah, the whole come, caboodle. Come down, have some brunch, have some champagne, eat some caviar, and mm. uh, basically have the best Sunday you could possibly have. Nice. That's the idea. That's the goal. Yeah. Very civilized. <laughs> well, yeah. Why not, right? Yeah, exactly. You know? uh, what are you guys doing here today for us? So we have, uh, we have two little dishes. We're going to talk about some of the menu changes that we've been doing mm -hmm. at 18, and we've been having an absolute blast. We have an extremely <laughs> talented team, which uh, is really great for me because we can do some really challenging things that, uh, that they get to plate and do with. So we brought two dishes today. One's going to be a roasted squash salad. All right. Mm. So this is celebrating spring. It's got some sprouted lentils. It's very healthy and delicious. And the other one is uh, some albacore tuna sashimi. And we're going to make a big seascape of it on this gigantic ice block. Ooh. Very nice. All, All right. right. Well, let's get at it. All right. Um, you want to start with fish? I'll start with salad. Yeah, let's do that. OK. Yeah. Awesome. So this first thing here, this is a uh, cheese that we make at the uh, restaurant. We're using apple cider vinegar. Okay. So you can see how nice and creamy. Nice and, and creamy. Yeah, there's quite a good texture to it. Yeah. It's really neat stuff because it's super, super soft. And people that aren't, I guess, that used to eating cheese or are scared of it, they can start off with this as a nice little entry level. Okay. Now, is there thing. any dairy components to your cheese? or? Yes, it's yeah. uh, mostly buttermilk, and then we Ooh. set the cheese with some apple cider. Nice. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. So it has these, these nice little notes to it. So, and Kurt, you're working with some, some beautiful tuna over there. Have you, have you just cooked it off slightly? Yeah, so this is a uh, beautiful albacore tuna that comes from uh, just off the coast of BC. And uh, we bring it in, and then what we do is we torch it lightly, uh, just to kind of get that uh, you know, flavor development on the outside. And then uh, we'll slice it nice and thin sashimi style. Okay. That's how it's going to end up on the plate. Yeah, because the true uh, way to cook your, your fish or salmon or tuna is you don't cook it right through, correct? You leave it a little bit tender on the inside. Yeah, that's is the that best right? way to get about yeah. it. You just want to get the inside uh, somewhat warm if you're yep. doing a little piece of a salmon fillet. Right. Then it's, it's the best way to enjoy the natural oils and the texture of the fish. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. So what have you added here, Jonathan? So this is, this is something I'm really excited about. We've been doing this at 18 for a little while, and we just started doing it at Side Door as well. These okay. are sprouted lentils. Oh, oh no okay. way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so Super cool. They look like mini chocolate chips at the end. They do. <laughs> <laughs> when I first saw it, I was like, what does he mix with is chocolate chips? <laughs> chocolate in? Going off the deep end here, right? Eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a part of the, being the chef, finding new it's things. It's okay, to play I'll with. buy it. It looks good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, really cool thing that happens with these when you sprout them, you soak them in water, and uh, they think that they're, uh, it's springtime and they're in the ground. So they want to really? start spreading. What happens inside the seed itself is it makes a, or sorry, inside the lentil, it makes them. Uh, release all of the good things that are inside them that make them easier to digest. So okay. all the proteins are a lot more accessible to your digestive system when it starts to spread. Oh, well, that's good fascinating. To know. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Really, really rad. So this is kind of part of our wanting to uh, entice vegetarians to come out to the restaurant a little bit more. Ah, <laughs> Tammy's a vegetarian. That's perfect. Pick me, pick me. <laughs> well, it's nice to have something that caters to so many different tastes as well. Right at at your at the restaurant. Well, and I think nowadays too, when people are just a little bit more health conscious, a little bit yeah. more, you know, mm -hmm. searching for that thing that might not be as heavy as we've put on menus in the past. This is definitely a, a great option for those. Right. And Kirk, I mentioned off the top, you've done some pretty major renovations at the restaurant. Uh, so. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it was it was a bit of a push to the end to try to get them all done and finished. <laughs> uh, right. A lot of our front of house staff were 
painting and sanding right up till about an hour before we were open that day. Wow. Uh, but yeah. it does look yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, that's a reno. It, nice. uh, it looks absolutely beautiful. We've, uh, we've gone for an enchanted pond theme. Nice. And, uh, I, I, I think we I think we've nailed that pretty pretty well. There's oh, I beautiful, can't wait to see that. Beautiful yeah, metallic tones, um, some deep purples, uh, really homey, inviting. And it yeah. sits a lot of people. Like I think it's 140 tables, something like that. I think we can get to do about 150 seated. Oh 150 wow! Seated yeah. weddings. Nice. Yes. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. So what have you added here? You've added. Okay. Uh, so we have our roasted squash. Some green. We have our little spread of lentils. This is just some baby uh, kale. Okay. It's very tender and delicious. The, uh, this stuff here, this is a little bit more apple cider vinegar that we've mixed with a touch of argan oil. So it starts to taste very, uh, very rich and nutty. Okay. And the piece de resistance. The piece de resistance. More pickles. I have a thing for pickles. <laughs> I will pickle everything. Give it a It's yeah. supposed to be a trend, actually. Yeah, for there's this a trend, year. but everybody's got their, their, their kitchen niche, right? So yeah. mine's garlic, yeah. yours is pickle, somebody else is, I think, mustard. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess. It all depends, right? You have yeah. your thing. So, And look at that presentation. Yes. You're making me hungry. Well, there you go. It's a great way to start your day, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And this is actually my, my favorite part going on the end here. Uh, yeah. This is a marjoram salt. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh that's really? Been, uh, we freeze dry, freeze dry ourselves, um, oh, wow. and it's yeah. just such a punch of flavor that delivers right at the end. Nice. Oh, good. Beautiful. I'm very intrigued about the ice block here. What <laughs> is Perfect. happening here? Why yeah. did we get to this? Yeah. Right. Okay. So we're gonna start off. Look at all these pretty little bulls I bought with me. Yeah, these are nice. <laughs> <laughs> so this is some sea asparagus that's gonna slide right off that ice block. Yep, there you go. <laughs> That happens with ice. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with that. Very yeah. true. <laughs> oh, I know. This looks like the Rideau River right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so By the way, it's closed, the canal, in case you're wondering. Yeah. <laughs> don't go skating. So we have two cool things. One's the sea asparagus, and the other one, these are called sea buckthorns. Sea oh, buckthorns? I've never heard of them. No, They're, me neither. It's a really, really cool fruit. We we're getting these uh, from BC. They're growing uh, right next to the water, and they taste like passion fruit. Okay, it's in that little mind blowing. That tiny little e oh, it's a, it's a, tiny little a thing. punch of flavor like you've never had. Yeah, if you want to try one, they're right here. Oh yes, please. Oh, yeah, gonna <laughs> it's gonna be a little sour. I'm gonna try one. Sour? A little bit. Well, you guys oh. really sold it. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty good. Isn't that well, it wild? Is sour, but yeah. it wakes up your mouth. It doesn't it though? Yeah, very, but who didn't like yeah. sour patch kids as a kid, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is just the adult yeah, version. Yeah, this is the healthier candy. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's right. So we're just gonna kind of scatter this stuff around. Very pretty. Now the other part of tuna, uh, when we get these bellies, we're ta uh, we take up the bottom parts of them. They okay. contain a lot of sinew in it, so we're kind of using both parts. After we scrape the sinew out, we turn this into a tartar oh. that we serve with the sashimi. So you get to eat the Very whole tuna nice. Yeah. So we're gonna make little tiny quenelles with these guys. Weep. Extremely shaky hands. That's Oh, that's what you call a quenelle? That's what we call that's a quenelle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've heard of it, but I didn't know <laughs> what it was. It's, it's just the shape? It's just basically a shape. Okay. If you we go need to go out eating more, Derek. <laughs> yeah. <no>. <laughs> and <laughs> what do we have here? This looks... This is also kind of neat. Are those the that's the fun part there. This that's is the, the caviar. Part. Well, this, this was the thing. We, I didn't really want to go with caviar in the dish, but I wanted to make it look like that's what it was. Yeah, because so it looks tapioca? awfully large. Oh. Is that what it is? <laughs> well, I was paying attention. You said caviar earlier. I'm like, but it can't be tapioca. But hey, yeah, I love tapioca. <laughs> there you go. Kurt, I grew up on tapioca. <laughs> Still tickets available for the brunch? Uh, there are, yes. Space is limited. Uh, okay. And tickets are going. I would recommend giving the restaurant a call this week. Um, okay. And like I said before, it's going to be a riot. Um, I don't know how you can go wrong with champagne at breakfast no. time. No. So. There you go. You can never go wrong no. with something like that. Yeah, you can call them at 613-244-1188, uh, or you can visit them at uh, restaurant18.com to make your reservation. What did you finish off here? What is this piece here? This looks like some coral. Or something. It, it, yeah, pretty neat. Eh? So this is more tapioca that we've dried onto a piece of nori and then crisped up. So this is your little so chip. Fascinating. Oh, that is so neat. <laughs> we, yeah, we go a little wacky sometimes. <laughs> you mentioned spring, and none of us really think it's ever coming. Uh, Jonathan, but when yes. do you think you're going to turn over the menu to a new spring menu? Well, we're 
Uh, I'm just going to walk off. <laughs> <laughs> You're on your own. Here, get, a, get this man a ladle. Uh, the day the uh, river thaws, I, okay, I believe. Pretty much. When it starts to feel like spring, that's, that's when that's the idea. bring it to and it. If we can on. start getting things from Ontario and like produce, rhubarb, asparagus, yeah. morels, as soon as that happens, then mm -hmm. we just run with it to go all the way until uh, October. And it'll it'll be pretty much a full blast menu change. It'll, it'll go from all this yeah. kind of wintry stuff that we have going on now to uh, uh, freshness overload, basically. Terrific. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Looking forward to it. Guys, thanks so much for joining Thank us. You. Really appreciate Thank it. Again, welcome. the charity brunch happening Sunday, March the 29th. That's this Sunday. Starts at 11 a.m. You can call them again at 613-244-1188 or visit restaurant18.com to make your reservation. We'll be back with more daytime right after this. All right, this is going to be fun, and it's going to be tasty times, guaranteed. Chef Kirk Morrison is with us uh, right now from uh, the upcoming The Gladstones Commons. We'll be talking about that, and he's also affiliated as well with a Mina restaurant. Uh, how you doing, Kirk? I'm doing great, Dylan. How you doing? Look, look, you're a chef. Well, you're, always, you're preparing <laughs> stuff as we as we go here. You're getting it all ready. Uh, food. How many how many years have you been a chef at this uh, point? Since I've been 16, it was kind of when I had my first cooking job. Yeah. I was uh, lucky enough to have my parents own a small sandwich shop. Yeah. So that's kind of where I got my start. Um, okay. Yeah. So a long time. Do you ever get tired <laughs> of food, though? Do you ever get tired of making it pretty? And um, no, 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 I don't. I think that's why I've been in the business for so long and have you know, made, gotten longevity out of it because it's, it's what I love. It's what I'm creative in. And yeah. I cannot draw a picture to save my life. No. <laughs> I can't paint. <laughs> okay. This is the only artistic thing that I'm uh, remotely good at. So it's kind of what I'm going to stick with. And I know your stuff is very artistic. And, and, and so we're sort of promoting a couple things going on here because, so we've got um, the opening of Mina. Yeah. So uh, we closed Mina on New Year's Day so for renovations. Reopening? Yeah. So it's been closed now for about uh, three months. We're going to open May 1st. Okay. Um, lots of big changes. We've essentially doubled the size of the kitchen. We've done a lot of renovations in the front of house. Uh, so it'll be quite stunning. Okay. I know it's been a while, but uh, it's worth the wait. Okay. And Mina is on a Preston Street as well. It is on Preston. Right yeah. in the heart. So, uh, so we're talking about Mina. We're also talking about this uh, another grand reopening of sorts that's <laughs> happening in the fall. Yeah. So myself, as well as uh, the primary owner, from Mina, we got together and decided to open our own place. Uh, now this is going to be down off of um, Bank Street at okay. Gladstone. Okay, all right. And the name of this place is the uh, beautiful Gladstone Commons? The Gladstone Commons. Okay. Uh, hopefully that kind of describes the feeling of the restaurant. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be casual, yeah. uh, but very high quality food. Okay, amazing. So what are we cooking up here today? Uh, so today we're going to do um, something that is uh, could appear on the new menu at the new restaurant, uh, but very end of winter inspired. So okay. we're coming to the end of winter. We don't have many fresh ingredients left. Uh, so we're working with stuff that we've tried to preserve over okay. the cold winter months. Okay. So we have uh, fermented pickles, we have sauerkraut, we have some pickled beets, we have some creme fraiche. So all mm. things that are meant to last a little bit longer. Okay. And this, what is this going to go with? Uh, pork tenderloin. Mm, I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah, because I guess, so you know, you want all these vegetables and this and that, but sometimes, like you said, like it's the winter, the stalks are starting to get maybe depleted a little bit. So exactly, it's, yeah. It's, uh, uh, it, it's tough to have fresh ingredients in, in Ottawa yeah. <laughs> in the a, middle of are winter. Are you a preserver yourself? I am. I, I'm a huge fan and uh, big into that. I think it's especially, like I said, living in Ottawa and living in Canada in the middle of the winter time. We can't be, you know, bringing stuff in from Mexico and, yeah. and southern United States yeah. and stuff like that. Okay. So this is a way to take some of the things that are uh, fresh and local and yeah. in the height of season and preserve them so that we can use them later on. So you guys believe in local? Yeah. That's oh, 100 percent. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, you know, over the, the past three years I've been in Ottawa, I've kind of cultivated some really good relationships with the local farmers. And it's important to their business. Without oh, us buying that kind of stuff, they... Yeah. Uh, they can't sell it. I couldn't agree more, right? <laughs> Local is, is so important, right? We yeah. want to keep money within our community. Uh, so, okay, so let's see. Is there anything I can do for you to help out? Uh, this, yeah, uh, you know what? Uh, you're going to do the sauce for the pork tenderloin, which is going to be a little bit of a mustard cream. Okay. Uh, so, like I said, we have a little bit of whole grain mustard here. Uh, there's some creme fraiche there. Okay. And then a little bit of mixed chopped herbs. So, you okay. can maybe take about half that creme fraiche. Dump it in the little white bowl and then uh, season to taste with those herbs there. Creme fraiche. That's, yeah. I've never heard that before. That's <laughs> so it's like, it's like fancy sour cream pretty okay. much. All so right. we're going to uh, we're gonna find a burner that works here. First of all. <laughs> that always helps, I guess. <laughs> That's always key when you're trying to cook anything. Yeah, you know what So I mean? we're talking about this whole? Uh, uh, yeah, you, half of that should be okay. fine, yeah. I know you probably already gave me instructions, right? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when it cut, this is my problem when I'm in, in the kitchen. Like, I just do not follow any recipes at all. Just like, whatever. That's freestyle that's cooking, good. though. That's okay. You, yeah. can, uh, you can get away with that's that. That's a good way to be. Okay. All right. 
So, so all of the uh, creations uh, that are going to be on the new menu, I mean, are they basically all stuff that you've uh, cooked up yourself, like things that you've thought of? Yeah, so there's, uh, I mean, whenever you're designing a menu, there's a bit of a, uh, there's a bit of a sequence of events that happens. You go through your past experiences, you kind of go through different, um, you know, things that uh, you might have seen, that might have uh, been inspired by over the past uh, little while, and then you kind of see what's local and fresh and in season, then mm -hmm. kind of go from there. Yeah, okay. So what exactly is this that you've just... Uh, so this is just the, the sauerkraut. So this is the sauerkraut here. I always like to warm it up yeah. uh, in a pan with a little bit of butter because that makes everything better. Yes. <laughs> and then, uh, so that's going to kind of go right. down right on the plate there. And then we're going to take a little bit of these herbs too that you just use for that uh, thing there and get uh, get that in there real nice. And just give this guy a little flip. Yeah. About how long then would you cook the uh, pork tenderloin? So this pork tenderloin, we've already sous vide it. So it's what been. Does that mean exactly? um, so we've cooked it under vacuum in a water bath. Okay. So the pork tenderloin itself is pretty much fully cooked. We're just uh, putting it in a pan to add a little bit of this garlic and thyme flavor, as well as get a nice little crust on it. Okay. So see, see I'm clearly not a chef by any means at all because you <laughs> just said you cooked that under a vacuum in a water bath. Is that what you said? Yeah. So basically, <laughs> we, we take a um, you know those little food saver pros you can get them at Costco or whatever. Yeah. The vacuum seal your food. Yes. So we vacuum seal the pork tenderloin with some aromatics in there. So some fresh herbs, a little okay. bit of butter, and then we've dropped that into hot water. Okay. And the warm water slowly and gently cooks that protein, mm. so it keeps it nice and moist and juicy, and you don't end up with dry pork at the Sounds end of the good. day. And it smells great in here, too. So. <laughs> so, I mean, as a chef, though, you must get used to these smells like uh, in a good way, like do, do you even notice it anymore? Yeah, you know what? It's it never gets old. Yeah. Like this, the the smell of like of uh, roasted garlic and and thyme and that I I don't think I'll ever get bored well, of that. It's an incredible smell, right? <laughs> Okay, so tell us one more time. Okay, so we've got to the Amina restaurant then. The grand reopening is going to be happening on May 1st. May 1st, yeah. Okay, but Unless, guys, uh, barring a natural disaster, which I really hope let's doesn't. Let's hope there's no <laughs> natural disasters, Kurt Kavars. So yeah. That, <laughs> but uh, the Gladstone Commons, yes. so you're looking for a, a bit of fall start. For yeah, we're, we're, aiming for, we're aiming for fall. Uh, one of the special things that's actually... Um, kind of becoming a thorn in our side though, is we want a butcher shop to be a part of the restaurant as well. Okay. So that's one of the things that we need special permits for, and uh, that's basically why it's kind of halted the, the opening of the restaurant. Well. But uh, you know, we're sticking to our guns, we're gonna make it happen, and uh, at the end of the day, I think it'll be something very special for Ottawa. Ooh, look at that butter coming. That's the <laughs> it, is butter though like the magic ingredient sometimes? It really is, if, if ever you wondered what- And beverage events, and of course, raising money for over 20 local charities and one of the participants is restaurant 18 we're joined by chef de cuisine kirk morrison kirk welcome back to the show Thank great to have much. you here and we we're already talking about some of the really unique ways yes. you guys prepare things at <laughs> restaurant 18 and i want to start there because i missed a little bit of the conversation you and julie just of had. course yeah what is that that you have in front of you there, uh, that first piece so these uh here are chardonnay pearls and essentially what we've done with that is we've used a plant-based uh agar to set the liquid, which is Chardonnay vinegar. Uh, okay. And we drop that into freezing cold oil and it forms a perfect sphere. Uh, really? So this basically becomes the vinaigrette, if you would, on our plate. Isn't what that crazy that somebody <laughs> sat down and figured yeah, that out, I right? know. Like, you how know do you what think we're of lacking I'm in life? I'm going to take the, uh, the Chardonnay <laughs> right, right? And, uh, Cold, cold oil. You need the cold, yes. yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I, I will, hey, let's I, I stop will. frying with oil, <laughs> and let's use it to cold yeah. infuse things into yeah. spheres. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. I will not take credit for that, but... Uh, uh, no, you should. <laughs> no, we just did. We would have bought into it. So what are you preparing here for us today? A couple things. Two things off of our new menu, which actually goes uh, live tomorrow, uh, which is very, very exciting. Uh, lots of fresh spring things and summer things, uh, which after a long cold winter is very uh, like. Yeah, you, you were pretty excited. Yeah, oh, really oh, was <laughs> I ever, was I ever. Great things. Uh, so you know what, we're going to start with our, uh, with our beet salad today. Uh, okay. So the first thing that we're going to go down on the plate with is a green peppercorn. Now this is fresh green peppercorns. They're still on the strand. Oh. Uh, you, you see them very commonly in Southeast Asian cuisine. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go down on the plate with just a little bit of a, a schmear like that. A schmear. That's actually that's a schmear. schmear. That's a technical yes. term, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It All is, right. yeah. We can't uh, use that because <laughs> we're not <laughs> no. in the profession. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we have some beautiful pink beets here uh, that we're going to go down just kind of abstract oh, where, wherever, wherever they're going to go down. And uh, yeah. Yeah. put those wherever. I call those candy cane beets. Right? <laughs> they uh, yeah. And they're super sweet too, which is very nice. Uh, we also have some snap peas. I'm just going to go down there like this. So is this part of the Mother's Day uh, brunch? Uh, this will any will, of these? 
appear? These dishes will not be appearing on the Mother's Day brunch. Um, we have a very special menu that's just been designed especially for that. Nice. Mm. Uh, so moms are the uh, most special in the world, so we've done a, a little special menu just for them. Terrific. Which is uh, super exciting. Uh, and then we're going to have some of the pea shoots that come from those snap peas. So, you know, we're using the oh whole part nice. of the plant. Super delicious there. Which is something yeah. that you're doing. You have a... Um, a butchery program right now we as do. well, right? Yeah. Between yeah. both uh, Restaurant 18 and Side Door. Well, I that understand. was one of the great happenings after Chef Johnny took over uh, Restaurant 18 and became the executive chef for the company. Uh, we we're able to share resources and people among both restaurants. Oh, that's cool. so great. One of those programs we have been doing is a whole animal butchery program, which uh, we've brought in pigs, ducks, lamb, uh, you know, some of your smaller fare like that. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I get a chance to teach the kids how to do it. They get a chance to learn how to do Perfect. it, and uh, everybody wins. So I'm going to ask you to step back for two seconds because okay. we do have oh, fire. Oh, I always <laughs> love fire. Wow. Hey, guys, so, eh, and fire? Yeah. You immediately just, oh, yeah. oh good. <laughs> <laughs> There's so a we're just gonna, torch involved. We're just going to torch great. this uh, capicola a little bit just to bring out some of those uh, roasty Roast pork flavors. Roasty okay. pork. And then that's going yeah. uh, to be our new... Beet salad dish. That is Check beautiful. That out. Very good. Amazing. Well presented. <laughs> what are we doing next here? Now uh, we do see some tuna there. You do see tuna. Now this is uh, if, if you're a fan of tuna, this is going to push you over the edge here. Okay. Basically, we're going to start with. I want to see that. I want to see Derek over the I, edge. I am a fan, so I might go over the edge. <laughs> yeah, buckle up, girlfriend. <laughs> uh, we go down with a little bit of tri creme fraiche first. Yeah. We have our albacore tuna loin right on top of that. A uh, loin. Now what we've done with the belly is. Uh, We've scraped it and we've turned it into a little bit of a tartare. So that's going to be okay. a, a pairing, uh, again, using the whole animal. Uh, right. The belly's quite fibrous. It's got a lot of connective tissue running mm -hmm. through it. Uh, so in able to utilize that, we have to scrape it uh, into a tartare. Is it nice. challenging using that with the butchery program because y you have to use literally everything? Right. Does uh, it make it fun, though, because it, you have to get more creative? It, it, yeah, and you know what? That's, that's what a lot of it is, is, you know, as a chef, pushing what you're able to do, what you're able to teach other people how yeah. to do, and what other people want to see on a plate when they come to your restaurant. So it's because I can't imagine myself. I've been looking at some <laughs> things going. I don't know what I'm doing with that. Uh, <laughs> I so just, we did. Well, do we have done that. We just pile it up on the plate. There you go. There, eat that. That looks like a portion. <laughs> So this is one of the uh, more opulent things we get to use at the restaurant here. This is Acadian sturgeon caviar. Uh, this comes from New Brunswick. So very Canadian, very nice. I'm going to put a nice big dollop on there because oh we're going to eat this later. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> you know we are. <laughs> and then we're going to finish up. Yeah, you're uh, not getting out of here alive, buddy. We're going to finish up <laughs> with some crispy fingerling chips, just kind of wherever, and uh, a little bit of smoked olive oil. Smoked Beautiful. olive oil. So this is a uh, smoked uh, Aberkeen olive oil, which is uh, coming from Spain. Okay. Super delicious. Uh, really quite grassy, spicy aftertones. And then it's smoked. So Lovely. Those look beautiful. Now, you have such great presentation skills on, <laughs> on the plate. No, you really do. You, you just threw that together. That is not what my food looks like. So <laughs> do you spend a lot of time sort of thinking about the elements that go into it and then presenting it like oh, uh, art or the funny thing is is these platings here are probably going to change about 15 times before we change the menu again <laughs> right okay. and it's it's always myself or my sous chef or, or chef Johnny we're coming through is like you know what I want this here now right. and we're like okay yeah that does look better right. no, right. no I want this here now oh, yeah, okay that does look better so it, it, they're constantly evolving and it, it, it's an organic thing and uh, as new things come into season throughout the duration of this menu, we'll be swapping them out. So we'll have different peas on this dish maybe in the next month or right. so. Right. We'll have, uh, you know, we'll have a different garnish on that dish. So it, it does evolve and it is quite organic. Like, for instance, this one, you know, obviously you've combined some beautiful flavors together, but textures as well. Is it just as important right. with textures? Because, you know, if I'm cooking at home, I don't necessarily think of putting a crunch into something that right. I normally wouldn't. Add. Well, the, the, the fun thing about, uh, about working with Johnny is he always walks by and he's like, you have to have a crunch, a squeak, a soft, and, a th and he's listing off all these <laughs> all these things you're like you know what yeah that does make sense i and need so that list <laughs> i know right johnny, yeah. I want a crunch, a yeah, and if a you're watching johnny we want the list okay so we can do it at home uh but yeah so his big thing is everything's got to have a crunch so we uh okay. we, we, we try and deliver that whole experience onto your palate whether that's something soft something creamy something rich something acidic something crunchy and then that is what kind of gives your whole you know uh taste experience right. Now, when you're putting all of these, like your new menu together, how long does it take to develop a new menu? You know, you've got, you're <laughs> inventing recipes. For we it. usually start the day we put out the current menu. Working oh, on really? The, working on okay. the next one. Uh, you know, we usually give it about two weeks uh, of the new menu being out, and then we look at each other going, okay, what do you want to do next? 
and uh, and then we sit down and we see what's coming in the season. You know, we talk to our farmers. What do they have? Uh, we talk to our animal producers. Uh, you know, spring lamb. He has right. had beautiful pigs coming in in the summer. You know, so that's a lot of it has to do is with our communication with our suppliers. Kind of okay. influences how we present our. What's menu. the spring menu looking like right now? How would you describe it? Uh, the spring menu, uh, we're going to describe it as green. Uh, okay. We had such a long, hard winter in <laughs> Ottawa <laughs> that uh, the the when we first saw these green, fresh spring things, they had to be on the menu. Mm -hmm. And so we made everything just super fresh, very green. Uh, we're, we're continuing with that theme of being a little bit lighter and a little bit healthier. Okay. Uh, so a lot of these things that are going to be appearing on our menus are going to be a little bit lighter, not so heavy on the starches, uh, fresh green salads, fresh green purees, uh, stuff like that to really kind of get your taste buds kicked up for summer. Still Amazing. some spots left for Mother's Day brunch? There, uh, yeah, you know what, this is, uh, well you had, you were actually at the last brunch, yeah. which went very well. Spectacular. <laughs> well I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, we do have a few spots left for Mother's Day, but they, it's filling up even, even faster than the last one. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you Call are interested, uh, yeah, get that now because uh, they're not going to be around forever. And, and you will wow mom, by the oh, way. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, this isn't your Duff Smorgasbord from back in the <laughs> 80s kind of brunch. This is a real gourmet brunch. It's fabulous. Kirk, thank you so much no for joining problem. us. It's thank always a pleasure much. having you. Thank make you. sure you call, make your reservations. You can visit their website as well to make a reservation online. Don't go away. More daytime coming up right after this. Here's a look at our... Kirk Morrison, the cuisine chef de cuisine. <laughs> I wanted to say it that <laughs> way. It sounds super fancy. <laughs> I wanted to say it that way. Yeah. Um, who's going to tell us about a great event you're having tomorrow night? And we're going to be making spring on a plate, you mentioned. That's Kirk. the one, yeah. That's what we're going right. to be doing. So, so good to have you here. Thank you. Thank so, 18. Yes. You guys have had, I mean, I, I love I love the restaurant. I love the look of the restaurant. I love the food <laughs> of the restaurant. Um, and you've changed the menu or you, you've changed it seasonally? Or? This is actually exclusive to Roger's Daytime. A little bit of a preview what, to really? what's going to be coming up on nice. our spring menu. Uh, we haven't launched it yet because, as you know, it's still a little bit nippy outside. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but this We is noticed, Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> we noticed. Yeah. So, these are some of the flavors that we're going to be playing with uh, for the new spring menu, which should be rolling out two to three weeks time. Okay, right. so obviously emphasis on local. Yes. Yeah, so that's what we're waiting for. Okay, mm -hmm. so what are we going to be putting together uh, here? So uh, I'm going to get you guys to do a couple things. We have yeah. a little bit of mint All here right. and Beautiful. a little bit of parsley. So if uh, somebody wants to go ahead and chop those up. Chop so this up. So do you up? want to chiffonade that? Uh, you know, rough chop is fine, however you <laughs> like. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> Preferably keep your fingers though. I don't Constantly. want that. Keep your fingers, no fingers in the uh, And then over here, we're going to start with a smashed pea. Okay, oh So delicious. to that, we're going to add uh, clove garlic and uh, a piece of anchovy, which mm -hmm. is the secret weapon. If you've right. ever tasted anything good, guaranteed there are anchovies. There are anchovies in There's it, yeah. There's anchovies in it. Because people hesitate to, to put anchovy in their dressings or their yeah. food, but uh, it does add a great sort of saltiness and something that you, you just like, what is that? And it's usually it, what it, it is. It is that what is that factor, yeah. you know what I mean? So don't don't be afraid of the anchovy, I say. Yeah. Uh, and then some fresh English peas. You want to go nip one of those? I, I do love snacking on these things. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love how I'm not supervised right now, and I have Super the craziest <laughs> knife I've ever seen. Like that's terrifying. Uh, okay. So that's gonna go. Uh, those peas are gonna join the anchovy and the garlic in there. So just a rough mash. Just a rough mash. You know, we okay. like it kind of rustic. All those flavors are gonna marry real nice. Mm -hmm. I see okay? you have some salt there. Do you need to add salt when you're adding anchovy, or? Uh, yeah, yes bit. and no. I mean, there's so many peas in here and so little anchovy. That anchovy is just for kind of the, the je ne sais quoi, you yes. know. Mm -hmm. um, but we do need a little additional salt just to bring out the natural flavors in the peas. Beautiful. Uh, right. So salt and pepper to that. A little bit of fresh lemon juice. Mm -hmm. We're going to go in there and a touch of olive oil. And then those herbs over there that my I think I, I think so I've uh, got them, but... <laughs> Probably Look not. Look that. uh, that's so gorgeous. We're good? Back we're in good? Too. All right, okay, nice. So everybody in the pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we're going to give those another little. Why would around. you use the porter, the mortar and pestle instead of using like a like a little blender? It adds what? I, it adds rustic charm. Does it really yeah. does, right? It's a and because you know what, I, I know why I like it. It just it doesn't give you that sort of um, homogenous kind of. Yeah. You know exactly. what I mean? That's exactly. You do have texture to it, which is great. So that's uh, that's in there. You know, I prepared a little one earlier at the restaurant. It looks so that's beautiful. the one we're going to use for the plate. Uh, hot pan, a little bit of oil. Yeah. Okay. And then to that, we're going to add our beautiful halibut here, salt and pepper. Love halibut. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Delicious. Nice. So obviously, 18 is on York Street. 18 York Street That's is the address. Fun. Okay. And Love you have a, another big event coming up as well, the Chateau de Denai. Yeah, the Chateau de Denai's uh, wine dinner is actually tomorrow. Um, really great uh, wine agent, wine maker. Uh, Pierre is going to come down. He's going to talk all things wine. 
Beautiful. Uh, I prepared a menu for that. And, and where's the wine coming from? It's, uh, uh, it's coming from the Costa Nîmes, which okay. is in France. Okay, beautiful. Well, all these big words. <laughs> and I just uh, I feel so fancy every time you drop by the show. So uh, <laughs> So you put something in there. What are, I so want to see this fish. The halibut is in the oven. Uh, okay. So would you care to mix me a salad? I'd love to. Uh, so we've we roughly have, got about 20 seconds left. So when we do, do any through, mix, through the I magic play. of television. Um, so this is a little bit of creme fraiche just right on the plate. However you like, doesn't really matter. You're mixing the salad. All with, and of course, they've got a, a, a list of all the exhibitors. Beth, thank you so much thank for being here. I really appreciate yes. it. Congratulations on five years. Thank you, thank Tim. We'll you. see you Wednesday. We'll see you Wednesday. All I'll right. be back Wednesday. Tammy will be back Wednesday. It's Julie Tuesday. I'll be back with Julie tomorrow. Thanks for watching today.